Hello friends, this is Jasu Bakuhatsu, and I am a gigantic idiot. And by the way, this is uh, Let's Play Animaniacs for the Sega Genesis. So why am I a gigantic idiot? Well, you might notice that the password screen here is a bit different than the one we left off on. This is the password input screen, and the reason we're here is because I accidentally closed my emulator when I was saving my audio recording from the last uh, session. So, uh... Yeah, that happened, and we have to start over from the beginning, except that we don't, because Konami and Animaniacs are here to pick up my slack. The game has a password system, and we can use that to just go right to where we left off on the final stage. Uh, but uh, uh, the drawback to this, unfortunately, is that I and, uh, the password system doesn't save the amount of lives that you have. So, I, uh, so yeah, doing this means that I lose all of the extra lives that I've accrued over the course of the game. Which is a bit scary, because this last stage is a lot tougher than anything else that we've seen so far. It's very easy to get stuck in a few different places that can take a few tries to get through. So, uh, this could go very badly, but I guess it's what I deserve for uh, having made such a stupid mistake. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it's good like that. We got, like, a little bit of tension and excitement to finish things off on. So, um, yeah, that'll be my excuse for why this isn't actually, like, an incredibly stupid and horrible thing. Horrible mistake that I've made. <laughs> uh, more like... <laughs> more like Jasu Baka Hatsu. <laughs> uh, why am I making stupid... Weeaboo jokes in this. This is an American cartoon show game, dang it. It's like, yeah, no place for those kinds of... Although, actually, as it turns out, uh, we learn in uh, one episode of Animaniacs that Yako can, in fact, speak fluent Japanese. And Do I really want to go down there just for one star? I think I do. Like I said, that's, uh, that's just how we do here in the world of Jasu Baku Hatsu's obsessive, compulsive... Obsessive com ugh, try this try and get through this obsessive compulsion to collect every star in the game even though he's actually already missed a bunch so far. I don't know. I I just yeah, I just there's I there's I've done enough work to try and justify it. There there is no justifying it. It's just it feels good, dang it. I'm not gonna apologize, even though I probably am and probably have multiple times already. So what I'm doing here is actually a bit of an optional bit. Uh, those little flame jets that I just deactivated are actually on kind of a timed interval. They sort of turn on and off at uh, set intervals. And you actually can uh, get past them without disabling the generators by uh, j just sort of, uh, yeah, messing around with the elevator switch. And it's actually faster to go through it that way, of course. Um, but uh, this ne next obstacle can't be dealt with in that way. Uh, that electricity stream up there uh, just is just always on, and if you touch it, you die instantly. So you gotta solve this little quote-unquote puzzle here. And, uh, yeah, in which you vault Pinky and the Brain up here, and then they do a little dance for some reason. And yeah, that's actually a unique piece of music that only appears here at this one segment in the game for some reason. Um, I don't really understand what the point of all that was, but uh, thank you, Pinky in the Brain, for that little song and dance number, and also for charging into the generator to letting us go forward. I don't really know why they decided to do that. I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe they need the Warner Brothers to like progress forward or something as part of their next plot to take over the world. Maybe? I don't know. Um, oh, wow. I, I almost didn't collect that star. Plus, like, it almost, like, I, I just saw the puzzle, and I was like, oh, right, there's this puzzle thing, I gotta solve this, but there's the star, too, and you've gotta, gotta get that star before you solve the puzzle. See, that was, that is a puzzle star. If you try to do the crate thing before you collect that star, you don't get the star, and as we've established, that is unacceptable. But enough of that. Oh, actually, I, actually, not enough of that. This right here, these stars are really difficult to get because of the way the, the air controls work in this game. You actually... It's really difficult to just fall straight down in this game, and it's, it's actually impossible. Uh, no matter what you do, you will always fall either slightly to the left or to the right uh, whenever you jump. It's just That's just the way the jumping works in this game. You always fall either slightly leftwards or slightly rightwards. So if you want to... Ah, I knew that wasn't going to work. This right here is nonsense. This is by far the toughest part of the game, although... It isn't really, though, because you've got this easy extra life right at the start that's not very difficult to collect. But yeah, you've got these falling rocks 
uh, or falling objects, I guess, that you've got to deal with. And yeah, got to wait for those and then make your jump when the platforms are at just the right height. And uh, I mean, the, the intervals that the objects fall off on are kind of irregular, but still, this can be really tough your first time going through. And so, yeah, the objects are falling from above the hippos there. But even so, the way that guy's like hand is positioned, it makes it look like he's like throwing objects down at you or just like dropping them on you both of them and it's just like as a kid that always like really bothered me it's like why are these stupid hippos like just dropping stuff stuff out of their apartment windows it's like i'm trying to jump across these platforms and they're you're just making things really difficult for me it's completely out of character too it's like the hippos were not the, like they or actually i guess that's not really true they were I don't know, would, I guess you can hash out that debate in the comments. Would the hip hippos be the kinds of people to just sort of carelessly throw garbage out of their apartment windows? You you decide. But uh, anyways, that always pissed me off, those, even though it's obvious they're not really throwing them and it's just that the objects are clearly falling from above where they are. Uh, nevertheless, that's just always been a prejudice of mine since I was a kid. It's just, it looks like the hippos are dropping stuff on you, and I've always hated them for that reason. And their segments on the show were never that funny either, I felt. So, yeah, that's my bit on the hippos. It's not even so much that they're, like, dropping stuff on me and making things difficult. Like, that that's one thing. But, like, back in the day, I was like, it's just, like, the careless like, wastefulness of it all. It's like, dropping stuff out of your apartment window, it's like, that's, like, you're littering. That's just, like, and that's not cool. That's like one of the things they were big on back when I was like, you know, growing up back in the elementary preschool days. It's like, don't don't be a litter bug. And I, I was really big on that kind of thing back in the day, and it always just bothered me. And, uh, yeah, no really good... Nothing else to say along those lines, except that this uh, section here is another part that uh, can be really difficult. You do have another extra life here that you can use, but it's uh, kind of hidden, so it's right behind that crate there that I just pushed. Uh... But, uh, yeah, the the timing isn't quite, uh, your sort of room for error here is not as bad as it looks. You can make up a lot of ground in this next segment. But, uh, the, th the thing is, you kind of have to, uh, because of the delay in switching between the different characters, you kind of need to know what's ahead of you so that you can have the right character out in advance. So your first time through that area, it kind of, it, t it takes a few tries because you need to have kind of the whole thing memorized so that you can have your characters out in advance. This bit right here is a bit weird. You've got this helicopter sort of shooting at you with machine gun fire, but the machine gun doesn't actually damage you. It's basically, you've, it like fires this machine gun fire and then it's, it breaks the windows and it's the broken glass from the windows that actually damages you right there. It actually does a lot of damage. But, uh, yeah, you see, yeah, once you've got, like, the open window, no glass to break, they don't shoot at you. It's just they shoot at the windows and the broken glass falls on you and damages you, which is, I don't know, kind of weird. It's like, why is this helicopter here? Why is it shooting out the windows? Why is it shooting at me, but not, like, but only when I'm behind a window? I don't know. Nothing in this game makes sense. It's, it's cartoon logic, dang it. And then this right here, this section right here is also really difficult. You've got to dodge these flames. Or, th there's a few ways to get around this, actually. So, uh, you can just just jump through and uh, dodge all the flames, and then that's one way to do it. And, oh, yeah, again, those flames do a lot of damage. So that's one way you can do it. You can al you also notice there was that uh, fire hydrant there in front, and that's another way you can deal with that. And that's actually the way you have to get through this next segment. Although, I'm going to pull this crate a little bit. But, uh, so there's a few ways you can get by here, but none of them is really, like, very good. So it's like you can hammer the hydrant... Uh, and I'm dead. But, uh, yeah, you can hammer the hydrant, and that's another way to do it. But because of the wind-up animation on the hammer, uh, you can end up getting hit by a flame while you're in the middle of your hammer animation. So you just take an unavoidable hit that way. And if you try to jump over the hydrant like I did that, like I did um, the first time, uh, then you can just have a flame spawn right on top of you, and you can take a sort of unfair, undodgeable hit that way. And you can do the jumping hammer attack to do sort of a faster hammer and not have to worry about getting hit out of your animation that way. But then it's the same problem because you're jumping up right in front of where the flames spawn. One can spawn on top of you and then you take an unavoidable hit that way. So you've got three different ways to deal with these burning buildings. But no matter which one you do, you can sort of end up taking unavoidable damage no matter what you do. And that's... And that's, that's another thing that's, like, super aggravating on hard mode, where you can take, like, maybe two or three hits from those flames before you die, so it's like, yeah. 
So yeah, and yeah, that's like three segments, or uh, yeah, three segments in this stage. They're all like really difficult to get through, especially your first time through. This last building is tougher than the others. Actually, it spawns flames rush much more frequently. You can go across the top, technically, but it's a lot easier to go through underneath. Um, and yeah, here we are at the final segment of this level. And here we've got yeah another little musical interlude here. This that music that plays only during this one last part of the stage, and it. I could just go up here and collect that, and uh, yeah, that's the that's the object we're looking for. That's the end of the level. There's a crate here. I don't know why. And yeah, if you you can't, it's not high enough to let you get back to the rest of the level. I don't know. The reason I'm letting this play out is so you can hear the rest of the music, because it's I don't know. You wouldn't get to hear the whole thing if I uh, just collected the statue right off, but it's done now, so there's no reason for me to hang around here. That is it. We've collected the last the last thing. There is no boss on this stage yet. <laughs> so yeah, we do have a final boss coming up right after that. And before that, though, we've got uh, sort of uh, yeah, a little segment with Pinky in the Brain explaining what's going on with the final boss. Because yeah, we have all of our objects. We've completed, you've, we've completed our set of movie memorabilia. The game is over at this point. We've done what we set out to do. So what, what can go wrong at this point? And that's what they're going to be explaining here. So yeah, Pinky and the Brain end up, or I guess the brain mainly, end up being sort of the fi the main villains of the game in the end, which uh, makes sense. You know, Ralph, not the most imposing of villains, really, and we've, we've beaten him up so many times throughout the game anyways, who even cares about Ralph at this point? The brain, on the other hand, he's like a criminal mastermind. Like, he's the act only actual, like, evil character in the whole Animaniacs canon. So yeah, it makes perfect sense that they would have the brain be the final boss of this game, and I guess his justification for wanting movie memorabilia to take over the world makes about as much sense as anything that he did in the show, <laughs> really. But uh, yeah, although it's kind of interesting, this, as far as, I could be wrong about this, but as far as I remember, I don't think that the Warners ever actually interacted with Pinky and the Brain in the cartoon series. Like, the Pinky and the Brain segments and the Animaniacs segments were kind of two different, non-overlapping things that would happen in the show. So, as, as far as I know, at least, as far as I can rem remember, they never actually, like, spoke to each other or interacted directly like this. But, uh... So, yeah, I, I always thought that was kind of interesting. And, uh... So what else? Oh, okay, what else? This. This right here always bothered me, even as a kid. That is that is not the line. The line is, are you pondering what I'm pondering? That's the thing that I always said on the show, and that's... Uh, anyways, um, yeah, this actually ended up going longer than I thought, so I think I'm going to cut the video here, and uh, when we come back, final boss time! Uh, yeah, that, or, okay, before that, actually, uh, he's summoning the robot. This is actually, yeah, call back to an episode of the show, and also a callback to a previous stage. We saw this robot in the first stage very briefly after the cannon. Anyways, next episode, Final Boss. Don't miss it.